Hello guys, I think we're live now. How's everyone doing? It's good to be here again on a another Sunday evening stream. Yeah, I followed the stream today because I I'm actually going away for a few days during the week. And you know, to make it worth it for this week, I wanna make it I wanna do enough streams. So if I don't stream for three days, that, that you know, my activity on YouTube is gonna take a hit, so I didn't want that. Hello Canal, it's good to see you man. How is it going? Yeah, so let me just do a test on test on the audio here. Just make sure I can hear myself and, and whatnot. Make sure everything sounds excellent. YouTube is going to take a hit, so I didn't want it that. Hello, Canal. It's good to see you, man. How is it going? Yeah, so let me just do a test on... Right, it is a bit loud, isn't it? Like, the, the song. So let me know if you guys find it's too loud. Because if it's not okay, I can turn it down. But yeah. I can see that it's kind of overtaking my voice, and now should be a little bit better. Right, there you go. This is the, the volume. So yeah, let's get started. So the plan for today is to essentially just um, write a Docker Compose file for my Urchin application, right? Because currently, the readme doesn't actually say, or doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't have any, any um, detailed instructions on how you can install Urchin and use it. And I thought, yeah, I could post some detailed explanation on how you you can like set up a database and, and link everything or alternatively we can just write a docker compose file that's going to start the application on uh, two different images right so that's what we're going to do today i don't really have that much experience with docker compose but i guess you know some of you will especially you can now know that you you've got quite a quite a bit of experience with golang it seems so maybe maybe you know docker compose as well so we're going to be learning I guess we're going to be learning how to, to write a Docker Compose file uh, in, in today's stream. So the idea is the following. So we, we're going to have two um, two services running with Docker Compose. One of them is, of course, Urchin, uh, which will be uh, simply just the uh, the website application, right? No, no admin application, yeah? And an, another service, which will be the database, so the MariaDB uh, database, right? And there is already, uh, well, there, there are many, many, Docker images uh, for MariaDB. So I'm hoping to just be able to use one of those, really. Uh, but yeah, I just want to make sure that we have the right the right stuff, right? Um, now, in terms of updates since the last time, there's been quite a few updates, actually. We, first of all, we hit nine stars. So thank you for everyone who, who kind of uh, liked the project. And if you've not done it yet, please uh, start the project. The link is in the description of the video as well as obviously liking the video as well to help me out. And I appreciate that massively. Uh, we've had a first contribution for one of the uh, one of the people online, right? Frankie, I'm not sure if he's a, a viewer here or if he just found the project. But yeah, it seems to be going good. Now, in terms of updates, which is what I was gonna mention in the first place, uh, we have a, a CI now. So I've added very a very basic CI, which basically just runs linters for Golang uh, using the Golang CI linter uh, package and a build stage as well, which builds the application and then packages the application up, right? So that's what we have here. And you can see that we will should have like the um, the artifacts for this somewhere. There you go. So you can download them, like build for, for Ubuntu here. Uh, the, few, the, the plan for this in the future is obviously to add a build for Windows as well. And then, uh, yeah, build for Ubuntu and then just kind of make releases from from the the, uh, the CI here, but we're not at that stage yet. Now uh, I've also merged in the cache stuff that we did in the previous video. So I finished up the the cache work. Um, I've added um, mine a few things, uh, so we can endpoint we can cache endpoints now, and it works very well. What else did we add? Yeah, some changes to the god the go mod file that were incorrect. And yeah, I feel like that's it really. It's just been mostly the the um, the CI that's new. And now we're going to be doing some work to improve the, the readme, right? So shall we start? I think we should start. So let's go into the working directory. And I think I've already started looking at Docker Compose today. So you can see here that there is a Docker Compose, Docker Compose YAML file already for us. And the plan is to actually make this work, right? So the first thing I want to do is like, I want to make sure that the 
the MariaDB works fine. Now, from what I've gathered on the on the um, Docker hub, is that this MariaDB uh, Jammy uh, image takes in a few environment variables. Right, one of them is the password here. But I don't know what the username is, so let's try see if we can find it out, right? So let's go back to the Docker Hub, or hub.docker. And let's take a look at MariaDB again, into the Jammy the release that we're using, which is 11.2.3, I believe, right? Let's take a look again. 11.2.3, yeah, that's the one. So what does it take? 11.2. Does it have env anywhere? What are the inputs here? So, doesn't seem to be having any inputs per se. Hmm, interesting. So I thought you should be able to provide the uh, the username and the password, right? But I can't really see it being taken in just yet here. So root password, password unused, password unused. There is a section environment variables. Thank you, Canal. Let's see if we can find that. Yeah, I mean, there should be an env here, right? So Envis is, is here and doesn't really have, it doesn't take in in Docker image page. Yeah, okay, let's take a look. Maybe inherits from another image, right, that we're missing. So if we look at the tags again, and we look at Jammy. Jammy, 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 11.2.3. There is a section, he said. In the home page itself. Ah, okay, okay. Good. I was I was looking at the environment. Surely it will be described by the password is, right? Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, right here, right here. So one of MariaDB random root password. Password, okay. Now, is there a user one? Let's take a look. Environment variables. There doesn't seem to be one for user. Unless I'm wrong here. I mean, I don't mind running this with the default user. I don't know what that is, though. But... Oh, no, there you go. MariaDB user. It's here. It does get mentioned in here. It's that MariaDB service instance and network with user password and database. Ah, okay. So here's the example for it. So these are the... the variables we need to set, right? The environment variables. I'm going to copy and paste this. MariaDB database. Example database. Password here. And then we can just paste it here for now and then we can edit each one. Password is going to be root as well, I guess. Uh, database, I guess this creates a database by default, so let's call it urchin for now. And then the root password. I guess we're gonna go for root as well. Oh yeah, we already had that there. Okay. Um, now, I have this Docker image which I created for the CI, which includes Golang and all the tools that we need. Uh, the default password is root. Default user is root. Yeah. 
I don't I don't have to put this in here, I guess then, right? Yeah, we can just remove that. Uh, if the default one is is root, you say? Does it say it anywhere? Actually, read some of it. Make sure that I'm, I understand this. Start MariaDB server with instance. Starting MariaDB instance with a user, password, and database. And that's the example we copied it from. Uh, start MariaDB service instance in a network. We don't want to do this because Docker is already going to create as a network with the Docker Compose, right? Why does it say the default user is root? Well, I'll leave it there any, anyway. It doesn't, doesn't hurt to leave it here, right? For now. Um, cool. But anyway, I've got this Docker container, which kind of has the um, other tools that we need. So we have Go uh, 1.22, and we also have Temple here, and we also have, what else do we have? Now we don't have Goose, right? We do not have Goose. We do have Goose. Yeah, we have Goose. So we have Goose installed for the database migrations. And what else do we have? We have Temple, we have Goose, we have Make. Yeah, we have Make. So we have everything to build it, right? Now we don't have MariaDB, obviously, which that's, that's gonna be started right here. Um, what else don't we have? Yeah, do we have Air? Yeah, we don't have Air either. So we need to go install Air. So let's bump this, let's install there. That's the first thing we need because I want the user to be able to run this in Docker Compose and actually see the changes in real time that they're making, right? And I, hopefully there's a way to Docker image, uh, volume, mutable. Can you, can you have mutable real time volumes in, in Docker containers? It's mutable, otherwise details, okay. That's the default, right? Yeah, maybe we can do this. So like make it so, um, can can we update volumes from the Docker image uh, volume? Update volume. So once, my question is once you map a directory to a Docker, Docker container, it becomes immutable, right? So it's just gonna copy over the files, basically. So I'm, I'm wondering if like, I can do it so when I edit the files on my, my main repository, if it's gonna show up on the Docker as well. You can bind host path inside container by default is read write mode. Right, cool, I'll do that, dude. Cheers. Cause I wanna make sure that, you know, when I run, when I change something in the app, uh, Air is gonna pick it up on, on the Docker side automatically. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm interested in doing here. But yeah, one thing at a time, let's see if we can run this, right? Well, thank you, Kunal, Kunal sorry. How's your week been, by the way, dude? I've not seen you in a long time, man. Huh? I think we missed you in last stream, right? But well, it's good to see you again, man. Definitely miss your knowledge, man. <laughs> not gonna lie. Um, so yeah, we've got that. We can do command here. Is that right? So docker compose. Let me see. Oh, what am I doing? Docker compose YAML documentation. So we have command here. That's what I'm looking for. So command has to be either like this or that. Okay. Well, yeah. First things first. Let's add the uh, the air thing into our database, right? So I'm gonna sorry. I'm gonna add air to my my Docker container that's gonna be running this. So let's do just that. I'm going to be adding air here, and which version are we on? We are on 1.49, right? Um, 
I was busy with production outages. <laughs> yeah, dude, that'll be me next week, man. Next week we have a big event where we're releasing our stuff into. And there's going to be an event with like three, three to 4,000 players, I think, on the game that we've, we've made in a single server, by the way, which is pretty impressive. And I, I wrote most of the code for scaling it. Uh, not most of the code. I wrote some of the code for scaling it. Obviously, the uh, the majority of the work's been done by the team, so right, other people. But I'm interested to see if it's going to go smoothly. But anyway, we'll see. <laughs> that's on. That's next week. So at some point. So yeah. I assume I won't be streaming on those days because I'll be having to support people in America, which is a different time zone to me. In fact, I'll be probably awake until three or four a.m supporting them so that'll, that'll be interesting to see but yeah love production let's check out to me let's pull let's create a new uh, a new branch here just for the docker container docker add air so we have that and we have the docker image in here somewhere uh, docker file sorry docker file I'm gonna bump this for now, put it to three, and then we're also gonna do one of these in here. So what did I say it was? View 0.1.49, I think it was, is that correct? Or oh, 1.49.0, that's the one. The 1.49.0. So for anyone watching this in the future, this is the Docker file, which basically just creates the, the, the Golang environment that we need on the CI. So it contains all the tools needed to build an urchin. And that includes obviously Golang itself, uh, version 1.22, as well as the, uh, the other files, the other, sorry, the other tools that we need here. So you can see Goose has been installed, Tempo has been installed, Air is now being installed as well, as well as Golang CI, which is like a, it's not really an SDK, but it's a collection of uh, linters for Go, which we're running on the CI as well. And this is all done uh, with a simple kind of like wget command or the go install command here. Uh, one thing that I found for you guys that you know are interested in making Docker images with with um, the Golang tools is that if you don't run the the clean cache mod cache test cache and first first cache. In fact, I only think you need cache and mod cache, by the way. But it's good cleaning all the caches anyway. Your Docker image will be so much bigger than it needs to be. So this Docker image here, once it's uh, compressed, it's about maybe 220 megabytes big or something like that. Uh, but if you don't clean the cache, it's easily going to be a gigabyte. So yeah, gold does seem to blow <laughs> a lot of the file system with the uh, intermediate build file. So make sure you clean the cache. And obviously, I have other stuff here to clean up some uh, some space as well. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try this. I'm gonna do the Docker build command here. Oh, sorry, uh, Docker build. Uh, we're just gonna change this tag. It should be 0.3, and this shouldn't take too long because we're not basically creating a a Docker image for for C++. Right, that that shit's too long. But yeah. So right now it's downloading something, downloading the Golang compiler. And you can see it's installing Goose by downloading it and then building everything. So all these intermediate or transient dependencies are, are being built by Go right now. And they'll be all stored in the cache as well, like all the object files and everything that it generates, which are quite big files if you if you understand something about compil compilation. So if you don't clean the cache, those will, you know, stay there and, and you don't want that. You really don't want that in your, in your Docker image. So, yeah. So, Kunal, what do you do, dude? I'm guessing you're a software engineer as well, right? But uh, is it JavaScript that you do, Golang? I'm interested to know, though. I'm, I'm going to guess it's Golang, right? Because you seem to be quite good at Golang, but... I use multi-stage Docker builds, final stages, generally alpine base image with only binaries copied. Easily capture Docker images less than oh that's that's really cool dude yeah yeah I mean one one of the ways that I've um, figured as well to make Docker images quite quite small is is using the Alpine distribution because Alpine is really though now I don't want to use Alpine and this is well not really for Golang it, it can I guess we could have used uh, Alpine for Golang here but if you if you're having a C++ for example or a C um, Docker image 
for, for compilation or cross compilation. Alpine uses a different uh, implementation of the C library, glibc. It's not even glibc, I think it's called muzzle or something like that. Which basically means that if you compile a binary on that system, uh, you won't be able to run it on some some you know places like Ubuntu, for example. So it's not very it's not compatible. Uh, but yeah. That's why I don't use Alpine, but I should have used Alpine for Golang. It's just, you know, a, a C++ thing. Generally, you want to build on, on the platform that you're going to be deployed to, essentially. But anyway, we got that. Um, let's see Docker images now. We have um, 0.3 here, which is 537 megabytes. It's like 10, 10 megabytes more than the previous tag, which I'm fine with. And obviously, if we do a Docker run here, I just want to make sure that Air is installed. Yeah, Air is fine here. And in fact, if I did something like uh, Docker run or something, and then put a, if I put a little volume here, right? Is that how it works? Invalid volume and specification, urchin. Urchin must be absolute. All right, no worries. Ah, okay, 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 okay. I see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, my bad. So if we go down to urchin here, which is on the, and do air. I just want to make sure that it builds because we've got all, everything needed. Uh, it doesn't, you see, it doesn't build. Oh, I've had this before. What the hell is this? So fatal detected GBS ownership in repository and in repository uh, ocean. Why does this happen, dude? Why does this happen? The urchin get status porcelain. Is it because of the user? So ah, it's the user mode, right? I've I've had this before, yeah. So like a container, GBS detected GBS ownership. I don't know. I can't remember exactly what this is, but it's something to do with the user permissions, I think. Um, which means I have to set it as user 1001 or something. I've had this in a previous repository. I can't remember where it was now. But yeah, it's to do with the default permissions for Docker. Um, where did I have it? I think it was... Was it Urchin itself? Let me see. It's going to be in my GitHub uh, CI anyway. Or maybe not. Yeah, there you go, user 1001. That's the thing I have to pass into Docker. I just don't know how to. I've been in the industry for more than 10 years. It started from C++, C, C Sharp and Java over five years. I am mostly into server-side engineering. Mostly Golang AI stuff and Python. That's cool, dude, that's cool. My core... My core is large scale distributed systems. Oh, that's really interesting, dude. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely, I will definitely hire you if I ever need it. <laughs> I'll make sure to contact you and see how much you charge to, to make my system scalable. Um, yeah, no, my my thing has been C++ so far. I've been in, in the industry for six years now, not as long as you. But mostly it's been like C++ development, systems development, and then I recently moved on to Rust, Rust and C++, but I do very little of, of C++ now, unfortunately. But that's my core, per se. I did some uh, machine learning too, but not, not as much as you, probably. I do want to get back into it, man. Seems to be the, the stuff now. Right, so what is the issue here? User invalid option.
I don't even know why I use a 101. I know that this is the the way to to fix it though. Docker container run IMT user oh, run as the given user. Okay. What does this actually do? I want to know now. Let's read this. Fortunately, Docker run gives us a way to do this. Right, let's see. The problem, Docker writes files as root. Yes, we know that. Sometimes when we run build, ah, okay. So it's just that the default, um, the default permissions is, is all given to root, right? Because root is the one that owns the volume, I guess. The build creates files in a folder that is mounted into the container. So actually, this can cause us pain because those files will be owned by the root user. Yeah. When an ordinary user tries to clean those files up, when preparing for the next build, for example, we get clean, they get an error and our build fails. Yeah, it's okay, cool. Rust, now I have time to learn. <laughs> That's cool, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've learned it, but I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't really see that many jobs in it, Canal, to be honest, so it doesn't really, it's not something you must learn if it makes sense, so. It's um, it's definitely an interesting language, though. It definitely has like loads of shit that, or loads of stuff that other languages don't don't have. You know, borrow checker is, is the one that people talk about the most, and it's it's really interesting the way it works, and the way it keeps your programs for from writing memory uh, bugs, basically. Like lifetimes, another thing that I mention all the time as well. Lifetimes is like a new uh, a new concept that's only in Rust. I've never seen it anywhere else, but yeah. As well as the most, the you know, most of the modern um, stuff that you know modern languages have, such as uh, traits and a good type system, and so on and so forth. So it's definitely a good language, but you know, difficult because um, not as difficult as C plus C and C, as C plus plus, I'd say, but difficult in the sense that you know it's different to all the other languages. So you have to relearn stuff. That's it. We could try prevent the build from creating any files, but that's very limiting. We use lose the ability to generate assets or write any data to the disk. This is definitely too restrictive to solve the problem in a way that I could use with a any build. We could tell Git to ignore the affected files, but that carries the risk that they'll hang around in the file system and have effects on builds. We've encountered a problem in the past with Redbubble. Okay, fortunately docker run gives us a way to do this, the user parameter. We're going to use it to specify the user ID and group ID that docker should use. Uh, this works because docker containers all share the same kernel and therefore the same list of UUIDs and GIDs, uh, even if the associated usernames are not known to containers to run. Okay. This will tell docker container to run its process with user ID 1000 and group ID 1000. This will mean that any files associated with a process belongs to this. But I just want it to be me. But what if we don't know the current user's ID? Is there some way to automatically discover that? There is. ID is a program for finding out exactly this information. We can use it with the U uh, switch. Okay. Okay, yeah, cool. We can do that. That's what I need to do. Let's try that. What is the issue now, though? Uh, is it because this should have been, I guess, before everything else, I guess? Yeah, this should have been before everything else. Please, I hope I don't get a Nintendo copyright strike here. Groups, can I have, can I find a name for group? A thousand. I have no name. Wait, what? That is interesting though. Uh, anyway, so I do have Urchin. And if I do air here, does it not work? That's my question. Now we get a permission denied. Oh gosh, we're gonna have fun with this. We're gonna have fun with this. So it generated stuff and then failed to initialize build cache at 
.cache build. Permission denied. Okay, so clearly I need the root privileges at least, which is kind of a shame. So I can't just use this. And if I run with root, I lose the ability to do a an error here because we, we have issues with git. With the dubious freaking, wait, what? Yeah, there you go. Jubi's ownership. So what is the solution here? Let's think about this. Hmm. Let's see if there's a, a different fix for this. Carlos Gomez, let's go. Hello, dude. Hola, mi amigo. Como estas? It's good to see you here, dude. Good to see you. Good to have you guys to do some Golang. We're having some issues with permissions now. Because the idea is I've got this, this Docker image that has everything. And I want to be able to just call air with it and then let it build the, the entire project. But we're getting that issue with the dubious ownership uh, with GitHub or with Git. Because the files are all owned by root and then yeah. Hello, Susie Tags. Hello, guys. Guys, now that everyone's here, right, what you should do is you should, you know, zoom in to the YouTube screen and click on a like button for me, please. Thank you. That'll help me out quite a lot. <laughs> um, avoiding dubious ownership in dev containers. There we go. It's always best to run containers with the latest privileges required. By default, most dev containers uh, we construct using the default images are configured this way. Unfortunately, that may result in Git operations that fail with the message detected dubious ownership. Yes, we know that. You will typically see it under these conditions. You are running the container with an on root user. Yes, we are. And you are attempting a Git branch or in the operation. So why does this happen? We know why this happens is because, well, the volume is created and owned by the root. So yeah. And we don't want to do that. How to fix it? There's a simple workaround for fixing this issue. Add the following line to your dev container.json. Okay, no, yeah, this is only on, on VS Code, right? Did you finish the caching? That's what I remember you were working on before. I did, yeah, dude. Uh, so if you check out the link on the description, right, you can actually see uh, the pull request that I've closed because I finished it. Uh, there's, there's been quite a few updates, by the way. But we have it, where is it? There you go. This is the one. So if you click on the adding the basic cache, so you can see all the code here. That's what I'm saying. If you're interested, you can have a look at it. Add it and I, I am going to add some tests. I mean, it's obviously it's not like as, as robust as something like Redis is, but it, it does the job for now. It has like a uh, timestamping validation as well as memory, like space validation. So if, if it goes over like a certain amount of megabytes, it will not store anything else basically. That's what. Just for safety, I thought those two are absolutely necessary. <laughs> but that's about it. And I've tested it and it seems, it seems to work. But anyway, add save directory, build, whatever. This song sucks so much. Yeah, has anyone ever had this issue before? By the way, the dubious um, ownership in in Docker. So I've had it on the CI, and on the CI, I mean, all I have to do is, is basically start with the uh, with the correct user. But it doesn't seem to be the, the issue here. I mean, I don't want to change the Git uh, configuration inside a Docker container as well. What the hell, Jenkins? Jesus Christ.
I guess I'm just gonna do this. I don't, you know. I see no other way. Let's try and add that to our... I mean, if I do it now, like if I just put it here, and then I do air, it works, right? See, and there's no issues. Yeah. Um, you know, for the sake of moving forward, let's just do that. I, I didn't want to do this, but we can add it. It just says that, you know, it's all the say all the directories in in our Docker are safe for game. That's what it does. I hardly use Docker so I can say that I have. <laughs> I can't say that I have. Yeah, Carlos, you need to get on that, dude. Deploying applications and shit. I mean, I hardly use Docker as well, to be honest. I only ever use Docker when I have to do something for CI or um, something like this, I guess, right? So, right, I mean, it's looking like it's working. So let's do that. So we need to do, uh, go back to our Docker Compose file, Docker Compose file. And we can do it here, right? So we can, we can put command. Command can be a list of things. In Docker file, you can create a new user and change the ownership of the directory in the image to that user. Okay, yeah, I can do that, Canal. Um, but is this still going to work with my um, CI though, if I add a default user here? Because I'm pretty sure that GitLab will create a user and then run a Docker container on that user. Which ends up always being like 101. So I've like, sort of like had coded that 101 uh, ID for the user there because I know that that's what GitHub, uh, GitHub CI or GitHub Actions will do. But yeah, I'll consider that, I'll consider that definitely. I only use Docker for my database and the networks. Oh yeah, that's what we're doing here. Um, anyway. Yeah, let's look at the command and see what it has to be. So I guess it's just one command, right? Oh, we can just put loads of ands in this shit. So we can do, I uh, configure this and then, ooh, and then we go into, wait, can we change the working directory? Oh, volumes, it's volumes first. Let's do volumes, volumes, there you go. Volumes, mount points, mount, Mount host paths are named volumes. Specify as a sub option of the service. Okay. Type volume. Source data. Targets my data. All right. Yeah, let's do that. I have a question about your cache. You delete it in the get method if it's not valid, right? But what if I get? What if the get method isn't called and cache still exists though, right? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> then in that case, he wouldn't delete it. So it does an improvement, definitely. Of, uh, that's a good point. And yeah, you, you are quite right. So if no one calls the, the get method on that particular point, it's not going to get deleted. So ideally, what we want to do is like have a, I guess, a go routine or something that will, uh, every like 10 seconds, we'll be uh, visiting all the endpoints and making sure that we are uh, keeping the cache up to date, right? So that would be a good solution, I guess. But yeah. So these tags, mate, if you want to implement that, I encourage you, I highly encourage you to, to go pull the repository and then pull the PR in, dude. So I'm happy to review it and then take in the, the suggestions, man. But yeah, let me know what you think. So in here, we need the volumes. We'll do something when I'm free. <laughs> Sounds good, man. There's no rush, there's no rush. Whenever you're free, dude. So volumes here, and I don't know what no copy is. What is no copy? What the f hell is no copy? No copy. Flag to disable copying of data from a container when a volume is created. Uh, I don't understand this. What do you mean? No copy is not going to copy it. Oh well. 
anyway, so let's look at the source is going to be wherever we are now, and then it's going to be going into urchin. And then we're going to cd to urchin, and then we're going to run air, right? That's what we want to do here. And we want to put a depends on for the MariaDB as well. So we only want to start the, the application when MariaDB is, is, is started up, right? There's a depend, depend. Is there a depends on or something? There you go. So DB red is okay. So we're going to be depending on that. Thanks. I think you need to bind type volume uh, like that. Wait, what? Let me know if that's, this is not what it is, dude. Well, let me just take a look. Maybe I missed something here. Volume. Mount host pass and name volumes specified. Ooh. Specify the sub options to a service. But if you, uh, you can mount a host path as part of definition for a single service and there is no need to define it in the top level volumes key. But if you want to reuse volumes across multiple services, then define a named volume in the top level. I don't want to do that. Use name volumes. I think you need to bind type volume. I'm trying to decipher what you meant there, dude. The top level volumes, he def defines a named volume and references it from each other services volumes lists. This replaces volumes from an earlier version of composite file format. So volumes, we've got a type here. What does type mean? So type, the mount type, volume, bind. What did I have? I have volume, right? You need, you need bind type volume. Bind type. I think bind. Is that what you're saying? I need bind here. But why do I need bind? What is bind? I am confused now. Ah, is bind simply gonna like make it read and write, I guess. Volume bind. Docker. What does it do? The bind mounts have been around since the early days of Docker. Bind mounts have limited functionality compared to the volumes. When you use a bind mount, a file or directory on the host machine is mounted onto, into a container. The file or directory is referenced by its absolute path on the host machine. By contrast, when you use a volume, the new directory is created within Docker's storage directory on the host machine and Docker manages that directory contents. The file or directory does not need to exist on the Docker host already. It's created on demand if it does not yet exist. Bind mounts are very performant, but they rely on the host machine file system having a specific directory stru structure avail available. If you are developing a new Docker application, consider, consider using volumes, name volumes instead. You can't use Docker CLI commands to directly manage bind volumes. Lol, copycat. I'm dockering my C++ app. <laughs> yes, Liam, join, join us, dude. So you probably have... Uh, the XP needed for this uh, this live stream, man. Also, DB needs, needs a volume for persistent data. Hmm. It probably does, doesn't it? Let's sort that out in a second, Canal. Let's try and get this running first. And then we, we're going to add a persistent uh, database here. So yeah, I mean, Canal, what, what's the difference between bind and volume? So far, I don't know. It, it seems like bind simply just mounts onto the uh, Docker container. But can you, I mean, if you change the contents of any file in the bind, does it also propagate to the host machine? That's what I'm wondering. I'm putting in K8, nice. Uh, difference between V and mount behavior. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Canal. That answered my question. But that that explains everything then. So yeah, I do need a bind here. Um, yeah. So let's try and run this, shall we? So it depends on. That's all we need now. Now, I don't yet know how we're gonna like passing the credentials of this application to my my Golang stuff here because 
what I need to do is really, I you know, before any of this, I need to go into my um, my um, database. What's it called? Migrations, and then migrate it up, right? How often do you take holidays, by the way, Slim? Um, dude, never. I'm really bad for taking holidays, man. To be honest, I I took some holiday in November. I took like a week off or something. I went to Brazil, and then I stayed. Uh, I was I stayed in Brazil for another two weeks. I was just working from from Brazil, but that's it. <laughs> so that was the last holiday I took, man. Uh, also Christmas, I guess. Right, I took a week for Christmas. So, but like. Aside from those two, like I never, I only, I save my holidays for special occasions, I guess. What about you, Slim? Do you guys take a lot of holidays? Do you save your holidays? Do you sell your holidays? Some people sell their holidays to get paid more. <laughs> Let's see if we can run a Docker Compose up here. Docker Compose. So the what? I don't have Docker Compose up. What? Docker Compose? Hmm. Maybe I have a, an older version of Docker. 24. What are we on now? What version of Docker? What version of Docker are we on? Um, uh, you gotta take a week off every two, 2.5 months at least. Yeah, I definitely don't do that, dude. But I'm I'm really bad, man. To be honest, like you don't don't follow my <laughs> my example. But yeah, I do agree. Like every every two to three months, if you take a week, you know, you keep your peace of mind and you keep your mental health. In fact, you know, when I was working at Microsoft, I actually hardly ever took any any days off. Um, that's because I was a contractor, to be honest. And if you're a contractor, you know that you you get paid by by the days you work, right? So uh, if you don't work, you don't get paid. So I have some sort of like, you know, idea that if I don't get paid, I, I had some like this, this weird sort of mind block to take in holidays. Cause I, I was thinking, you know, I'm not gonna work. If I don't work for a week, I'm not gonna get paid this much this month. So I just never took it. It's, it's kind of like an incentive for you not to take days off, like being a contractor, which is not very healthy if you can't really manage your time very well. Like I, I couldn't. Um, and I also ended up like overworking a little bit and losing my mind a little bit. So that's that's kind of why I quit my my job at Microsoft. And there's a there's a good story for you guys. So don't do what I do. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, make sure you have your time off. Make sure you you take time to. Just look away from the screen and stuff. Because you get burned out very easily. I'll tell you that. Yeah, what the hell? Oh, which version of, of Docker are we on now? Ooh, Docker for Linux. I just want to find out which version of Docker we're on. Surely there's a GitHub, and surely we can see the the version in there for the release, right? Releases. Oh no, Microsoft Docker. What the hell? I just want the actual Docker. Like, where where can I see which <laughs> what's the latest version of Docker? Jesus, why is this so hard? Docker download. Get Docker. Yeah, I have no idea. Let's let's just see how we can install it again. I'll just reinstall it. I don't want the desktop one though. That's the thing. Two, three burnout makes necessary experience. Indeed, Canal. <laughs> I've only had one so far, man. And second one is going to be coming soon <laughs> after all this production work. Yeah, once you've had like at least one burnout, you just kind of understand that you need to take time off every now and then. So even though I, I say I don't ever take holidays, uh, I still take a lot more than I used to. Just because I know uh, that if I don't take 
part of this for like six months, I'm gonna hate my job, basically. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna still be motivated every day. I wanna get in there and, you know, do my tasks, do as much as possible and actually contribute to the team. But if you're burning out, you're not gonna be able to do that. So yeah, take your time off. We've got Cornell here who's been working for 10 years in this industry and he knows very well. He knows what I mean, don't you? <laughs> Let's take one together, 1st of March. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, I think I'm taking one on the 1st of March. And then I'm taking some days off later on at the end of March because it's a bank holiday or something. And I'm also going to be down in London for a Rust uh, conference. I'm going to the to a Rust conference in London. Probably shouldn't have said that because I don't want to be doxxed or, any, yeah, doxxed or anything like that. But here we are. You don't need to be worried about burning out if you keep staying hydrated. Indeed, yeah. That's a good point, good point, dude. <laughs> but yeah, I'm taking some days off in March. Let's put it that way. Maybe maybe two or three days off. All right, my man, where's the actual command to install Docker? Uh, should I have to update? No, I don't want to install the apt one because that's definitely going to be a shit version. Oh. Make sure the best else 2 is installed, install the next distro, we have that. Bigger sudo, yeah, we have we have all of that, don't worry about that. Set user. I don't even know how I got this Docker installed here, you know. Point is, I'm trying to, to install Docker, a newer version of Docker, because I don't have Docker Compose. Uh, and I know that Docker, com Docker Compose is part of the Docker installation now. So I'm just trying to upgrade it. Can I do an upgrade? Can I Docker upgrade? Install it manually, man upgrades, and image my upgrades. Wait. App install Docker Compose. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. But I'm not entirely sure if I installed this through App. That's the, that's the thing. I think I just used someone's random tutorial online on how to install Docker without the. Oh yeah, composers. There you go. There you go. No, Docker Compose. Yeah, I mean, ideally I would run run the Docker Compose with Docker itself. But yeah, let's, let's look at it. Because I thought it was part of the installation now. That's what I read online anyway. Docker Compose. Oh. Urging default with the default driver. Create a network. No such service. Okay, so it seems to be going going good now. Yeah, either way, like I'm, I'm going to let this pass now, but I need to upgrade this Docker. Uh, installation is just too old now. So urchin exited with code this. So let's see why. So error, wrong number of arguments. Should be two. Wait, what? Usage, git config. What? Ah, okay, so there's something wrong here. It's just... Can I put two commands in here? Does it work? Uh, Docker and Docker Compose come separately. Ah, okay, I thought... Yeah, if you need a Docker Compose command, use Docker C. Cool, cool. Yeah, so can I not have more than one command here? I mean, it should should be able to, right? What is the issue? Let's delete this shit in the first place. Ooh. Found all from containers. If you removed or renamed the service, okay. 
Natasha. Wrong number of arguments. Should be two. Use it, get config. Yeah, so it's just because of this, right? This is the issue. Because then it works. So somehow, how can I add more than one? Why, why is it not taking the and and? So, I can compose command multiple lines. Why am I being stupid? Ah, you can pass in multiple commands. I didn't realize. Wait, what? Oh no, you can't. You cannot do that. Bash minus E, this, this. Ah, okay. Maybe. Do I have to pass in bash here? No, no, there's no way. There's just no way. Uh, you can have a shell file to run that. Yeah, I guess I could, right? Let's do that. I don't want to mess up with um, all this shit here too much. Yeah, let's put it here then. So new file. Uh, what is it, bin, env or something? Uh, user. And then we can do this shit here. Let's see if this is gonna, gonna work now. So, in here we're just gonna run uh, what compose run shell, and I'm not sure if I made this into an executable. Now is Docker compose up oh, gonna work? Oh yeah, of course. That's because I need to go into... Wait, what? Urchin here. Now we exited with a different code. Uh, interesting. Just to make it easy, let's see what's going on here. So retracting... Wait, line air. Command not found. Why not? Oh yeah, we're on the wrong thing. Wrong tag. One thing at a time. We're gonna we're gonna discover this. There you go. Seems to be running. Seems to be running a little bit better now. Yeah, we still don't have the environment variables uh, to run the the stuff here. Yeah. See, because what is going on is that the um, the air command is actually setting the, uh, the environment variables itself, and I don't want to do that. I mean, I kind of want to... kind of want to pass this in from... Um... Wait, I guess, I guess this works, right? So if I... Okay, yeah, no, never mind. Maybe, maybe this will work, because it's in the same network. So, even if I use localhost, it's still gonna work, is that correct? If you have two Docker files or, or two Docker container uh, running within the same Docker Compose, then localhost referred to the the same network, right? In both in both um, machines. Correct me if I'm wrong here, guys, because I have no idea. Uh, so in essence, all I have to do now is just do run the migration. So I can go into CD. No, it doesn't. I think so because they're on the same network. All right, now. You know, just destroyed my dreams right now, so, right? I guess, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so what do we do here? Because I thought this is supposed to create the same network between these two containers. So how do I reference, how do I know uh, which, you know, where to call MariaDB from? They need to be accessed by service name as host name. Well, not sure you can try. Yeah, let, let me try that anyway, just in case. Because then I wouldn't have to make any changes to my, my air file. That's what I'm wondering here. So that can just stay the same. Um, well, let me sort out this 
this goose thing. So city urchin. So that's sort of the migration now. So if we go into urchin migrations, and then we do goose. Oh, what is the actual command though? Because I can't remember now. Stop and go lang app one. There you go. Um, goose up. Okay, good. So that is a command. I mean, goose driver, goose DB string. I mean, we do need like a local host or whatever the, the name of the, the connection is here, but we'll try this without it. Possibly you have to replace local host by MariaDB service name, you defined. Yeah, let's try with our local, with local host first and see if somehow it works. And if not, we'll try and figure that out. I'm just hoping that because it's in the same network, it's going to work, but I don't know. We will see. What are we doing? So, so did Goose actually run though? Goose run connect connection refused. Yeah, so it doesn't it doesn't work. <laughs> you are you are you're quite right. Right. So how to you refer how do how to refer uh, Docker compose database connection. Uh, they are in bridge network. Two, ah, okay. So two containers, total systems, IP. Okay, yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, for some reason, I thought it was just going to be like a local host kind of thing. So I've been a bit AFK. What's the issue again? Uh, the issue is that we are just trying to connect to the, the, the Goose application or the, the script that's kind of setting everything up uh, into the database um, network, basically. They are redemption. Hey, dude. Good seeing you again. Uh, hey, Matt. You should probably add a health check to your depends on. Uh, by default, Docker Compose depends on checks only if the service created and not if it's healthy running. Yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. I will. I will try that out as well. Thank you guys for helping because I've absolutely no idea how to use Docker Compose. You can probably tell it's like maybe the the first or second time using it. Second time actually. I used it once before, but didn't didn't get too far. Didn't get too far at all. So we have DB here and the back end volumes is there. Okay, how is this person doing it? Wait, wait. Take a look at etc host inside of the backend container. You'll see dear db1. So dear db1. Ah, okay. Because it. Oh yeah, this is where he uses the name, right, for the for the directory. You're on, and then one in front of it. Dear db1. All right. Static names to your containers. Services DB container name project DB. Okay, so I need to put a container name in the first place. That seems to be the the right thing to do. All right, container name, and then I have. Well, I don't need it on this one, I guess. It's just on the Maria DB for now. And then I guess what I can do is I can kind of search in database address. MariaDB there, and I'm pretty sure that I also need it here. All right, let's try that. Stop serving, bro. Stop serving.
So MariaDB started here and I've got a local MySQL failed to normalize MySQL connection. Default address for network my MariaDB is unknown. Switching to dedicated user MySQL. Entry point for MariaDB server started. What? Uh, okay, so that's. So that didn't work either, I guess. Maybe the string that I've written here is not the right one. So goose db string might not be correct. Wait, let's see here. Maybe I'm just not doing it right. What the hell is this song? I hate it. Oh, it's RuneScape, that's why. I don't rate RuneScape, guys. Never liked it. Okay, I like this song, though. Alright, connection string. I have no idea. Root and root are... Uh, okay. So what is everyone up to this week? Are you all working? Anyone on holiday actually, right? You're talking about holidays, Lim. Is that because you're on holiday now? Are you still working like a dog this week? Okay, right, so cannot start the service, MariaDB failed. Next turn. MariaDB error. Ah, okay, yeah, it's because I already have that connection, I guess. Open and running. So MariaDB run. Right. Dude, this is, this is difficult. What's going on? Why can't I find the entry point here? Default address for network, MariaDB, unknown. C++ Dockering is a pain with VC package. I'm using VC package based image with VC package already installed. Uh, dude, I just, I just like create my own, honestly. I have a, I think you may need a separate Docker file for Goose. Yeah, um, maybe I do. Any tips? Uh, yeah, so like I, I create my own. Like I, I usually pull it from, um, from like an Ubuntu version. Usually like the older ones, so like maybe twenty two point oh four now is old enough, uh, because the glibc versions when you compile things they're always backwards compatible, but not forwards compatible, obviously. So if you build something uh, on uh, Ubuntu twenty two point oh four, for example, that will not work on Ubuntu twenty point oh four the binary. So that's the first step that you should make sure you have. Either like a twenty Ubuntu twenty two, sorry twenty point oh four or eighteen point oh four. Um, then you can install just the tools that you need, right? And remove all the all the cached uh, build files and um, all the shit that you don't need, essentially. Uh, but there's no secret, man. Just try and keep it lean. I have an example here, though. You can take a look at. So uh, this is a very good like image that I use quite a lot everywhere everywhere I need like a, a C++ build and it's like very very small like 300 megabytes overall I think 
uh, but it has like the latest Clang compilers. It has GCC as well here, 11, which is not that, not that new, but oh well. Uh, it has Conan installed as well. It has everything here that you need. So, and do you just install VC package? Yeah, I just install VC package inside it. Exactly. Now uh, this is the uh, okay Gomez Carlos Gomez. You may need a separate Docker file. This is the DB string I found. Yeah, Carlos, I'm not sure if uh, if the uh, the DB string you found showed up because YouTube might be deleting it, unfortunately. And I'm sorry about that. Um, like, what the hell? What the hell? I mean, this example here that they have is for, uh, I guess, like local database. So this is the port that's coming from my, that's going to be on my system. And this is the port that's on the container. Is that correct? Let's try both of them and see which one is, is better. Try 306 and see if it, it works. Uh, I don't understand why I need a separate Docker file yet, Carlos. To be honest, I, I think this this should work fine. Like I already have the Docker file. I don't want to create another one just to run the application on Docker Compose. If it makes sense. Did it work now? I oh, know it's here. Default address for network. I oh, know. I did call it MariaDB there, right? Container name MariaDB. In this case, you can always be sure that your container will have a static name and you will set type project DB and never worry about the name ever again. You can create a network and share among services. Have you tried specifying the network explicitly? Yeah, uh, I think this, this is what we can try now. This, this is probably what this answer is as well, right? You can create a network and share among two services. Create a network for the DB and backend services. Add this change. There is no need to expose Postgres port externally unless you have a reason for it. You can remove that section. Okay, let's try that now. I mean, this, this sounds better anyway because we're not exposing the port. Uh, can you do a Docker PS check the container once? Yeah, cool. Let's do that. Let's do a Docker PS in here. This is what we got. I don't know what it means, but we got MariaDB here. Ah, okay, it's got a, the weird name in it, doesn't it? I'm not sure if this is the name of the, the network as well. Do you think this is why? Because it's not actually MariaDB, it's something else entirely. Uh, Docker Compose up starts in detached. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Cool. So we can do that. And we can take it down with Docker down, right? I guess. But do you think it's because this name is actually the the one that you know I would have to put in there? Yeah. I, anyway, I'm gonna try and create a network here separately because I don't like having to expose the these boards anyway. MariaDB should work. Oh, yeah.
3306 should work, right? Maybe it's, it's the goose DB string that's not correct. Although it, it looks fine though, because it's, it's usually uh, username and password, and then at, you know, localhost or whatever, and go CMS. Good, that's the name of the, uh, the database. And I have go CMS set as my, oh yeah, that's why. That's another, another issue here. It should be urgent, yeah. Let's try that again, shall we? Maybe it was that. It was, it was that that was causing me um, some issues. Is it dash D for detached? Oh. Docker compose dash D. Okay, it's started up. If we do a Docker PS now up here. Do I get docker logs or something? Docker logs, can we can we see the logs here? Oh yeah, we can see the logs. That's great. Wait, what? Air is just doing it over and over again, man. Let's normalize uh, connection. Default address for MariaDB. 306 and now. And it just keeps coming, right? It doesn't stop. Docker compose. Down. Right, let's take it down. And there is something else in here, I guess. So 306. Urgent database address. MariaDB. What did you have before? What was the issue? Looks like it's in a crash loop. Yeah, it's in a crash loop. It's, uh, it's a, an urgent issue. And well, the issue is that we couldn't um, get this to run here. So, you know, the application fails and then it just restarts again. So MariaDB3306 is unknown. Kind of sucks, but I guess we can try the the old network now. Let's see if we, we have any luck with this, maybe. I mean, I still don't know why it doesn't work, because I am giving this a, a static name. And as far as I know, it should that name should be resolved uh, in, the net, in the DB uh, string, basically. So, common. Services DB is there. Backend networks, common net, common net. So you have to add another thing here networks, another section, common network, and for this one here as well. should be renamed to DB. Docker will resolve the address service by itself. Uh, dash not underscore come on there. Oh yeah, that's true. Thank you for the typo. That's why I love having 10 people watching me at once. <laughs> right, let's try that now. So if I do Docker compose, oh, I always do have MariaDB everywhere. Right. We've got MariaDB here, 3306, and in here, in the air.toml, we've got 3306 as well, and MariaDB there. Ooh. No, it still didn't work. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is getting really annoying. So yeah, we no longer have the port exposed there, but. Okay, creating database urchin, creating user urchin. Oh wait, wait a second, like, 
what's going on here? So basically it looks like MariaDB starts up, right? But it doesn't actually finish the setup. And before it finishes the setup, Golang app starts up and says MariaDB is a none, right? So maybe that's the issue. Maybe it's just starting up when when MariaDB hasn't actually finished starting up. But we have a depends here, so. Okay, so what is the, how can we do this by the way? How can we make sure that the only query is the, the MariaDB um, database when I guess this finishes setting up. <laughs> that's the that's the main issue. But either way, right? Air should like keep running all the time, and it does. It does finish running eventually. Like it it, succe it succeeds. Condition service healthy. Oh right, what is condition? Depends on. Right, let me let me take a look at that documentation though. Thank you for letting me know and now I guess I will be looking at condition on failure. Add healthy check for DB. Right. So this is a restart policy. So we already have depends on. How do I say healthy? Is it health check? There you go. Configure a health check. That's uh, that's run to determine whether or not the containers for these services are healthy. See the docs. Okay. So health check. Curl, whatever this is. Ah, okay. So what's the health check I can do? So I, I guess I have to add this to MariaDB, right? So somewhere in here. Right. So we do a command and then something to check that the DB is running. Interval. Right, what's the interval? Interval timeout starts specified durations. Can I run this every 10 seconds? Oh, I guess not. Command MySQL admin ping localhost. That's the command. Thank you, dude. Thank you very much. You guys are on fire today, man. Giving me all the, the ready-made code here so I can just copy and paste. Right. MySQL admin. Uh, the interval was a little bit too big, right? I guess 10 seconds is fine. We'll, we'll try now. You can have uh, two retries. Start period is two minutes. You know, I, I don't know what it should be. I'm gonna leave it as as what it is now. Uh, is this automatically only gonna say it's healthy when? Yeah, I, I guess I guess that makes sense, right? So we've got the pens on. Remove the start period, right? I mean, it's still connected really soon. Remove the start period, right. I'll probably try to like five. I guess this is just gonna run this every under your urchin. You miss one more thing under your urchin. Depends on, it's here. Depends on MariaDB. We do have that. So it depends on that and... Um... Now, if you need to brush up on my docker, <laughs> so do I, Carlos. I'm in the same boat, dude. Yeah, this didn't seem to be doing much though, I'm not gonna lie. Like, if I run it again, you can see. MariaDB is there and the Golang app starts straight away. It doesn't... Condition is missing for depends on. Ah, okay, there's a condition on depends on. Hmm. 
because it wasn't defined as healthy yeah because it has to be defined as healthy service okay yeah let me figure that out where we put that restart policy where do you put the condition on the pen depends on by the way depends on restart I mean the only condition I can see is on the restart policy and I don't think that's what you guys mean right then it's for the service to be healthy um. I'm just gonna google it Okay, so you just put a condition on the Redis. That's the, <laughs> it's just as easy as that. I don't know why the documentation didn't have that, but cool. That is fine. So we've got line 16 here. It's just healthy. Service healthy. Right. right, let's try that now. Condition service. Oh, yeah, thank you guys. I didn't realize you posted it on there. So we are recreating MariaDB. Container is unhealthy. Encountered errors while bringing. Okay. Okay, maybe it's the command that's not giving us something nice, right? Maybe it's not the right command. MySQL admin, do I have that? MySQL. I do, yeah. MySQL admin ping localhost. Can I have like a ping for a particular table to make sure it's like there? Check if my sequel is alive. I mean I still think that yeah. Let's let's do a few like retries. If I did ten retries, does it still work? Okay, compose up. We've also lost the logs. I don't know why they've gone. Container is unhealthy. Encountered errors while bringing the project up. Right, this is getting a little bit difficult. I don't know why. First of all, where, where are the logs gone? As soon as I added the uh, the health check, it's it's gone. And if I remove this, out of interest, do we get? No, yeah, we. Yeah, missing a health check. Now it's kind of makes sense because we have it as a health check up here. That's what it was before. I don't know what the interval is, but. So go lang app. Counted errors while bringing the project. Oh gosh. There's nothing running, right? Yeah. Right. No idea. No idea what's going on here. So whenever you're having a bad time, the playlist just comes up with a a Wii song, a Nintendo Wii song, to make things even worse. So I just wanna die now. I 
this point I'm just staring into the, the docker compose file without knowing what to do but we will get there so clearly the health check isn't working fine I don't know why I also need to stretch my arms so why is it not working so encounter the errors can I can I see what the freaking error is in the first place docker compose up oh docker Can you run docker compose open MariaDB? Yeah, let's try that. Oh, now I get the logs, right? <laughs> it says we're ready for connections, but. Oh, this is so depressing. I'm gonna jump this. Sorry, guys. And then we got Animal Crossing. I don't know which one's worse. So, um, I mean, it seems to be running now, right? So, switching to dedicate to user MySQL. Has it created my database? That's the point. So, creating database anywhere. Oh, is it just stuck? Is it stuck? I can't tell. Ready for connections here. What if I kind of remove this and just put 10 seconds in here? I wonder what effect this has. Okay, operation create user failed for root. So temporary service started, creating database urchin, creating user root, giving user root access to schema urchin, securing systems equivalent to running MySQL secure installation. Uh, operation create user failed for root. Okay, cool. Interesting. Is it because I You are creating a user with name root. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I think you did say this at the start of the stream, innit? Yeah, maybe you can't create the same user twice, right? There you go, temporary server started. So has it, has it worked now? That's the question. So has it created my database urchin? I don't see the, the, the logs where it says creating database now. Oh, there you go. Creating database urchin, securing this, stopping temporary service. So it's ready for.
so the health check isn't quite working, right? That's what I can gather from this. So this command MySQL admin ping isn't quite working. Let's see if we can find. I yeah, thank you, Day of Redemption, but I don't think the command is quite working. I don't know why. Or maybe the there's something in this particular container that isn't working well. Container is unhealthy. Errors while while bringing up the project. Using health check .db. Uh, we don't want to service healthy. That goes here. Making sure the db dir is created. Getting the MySQL version. Ping the admin. Yeah, that's what you got, right? Can you do exec on the container and check if the health command is working? Yeah, let's do that. Um, right, what's a docker exec? Mm, so there you go. So that is still working. So we, if we do a docker exec and then it my container, that will be. Oh. What is the process name here? And what do we have here? We've got CMD MySQL admin. It's gonna copy and paste all of this and remove the stuffs in. Oh, I forgot I'm using them. Right. My SQL admin command not found, so it doesn't have my SQL admin. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> That's why. Um, what the hell does he have then? Alright, thank you. Thank you for suggesting that. That's from the official DB documentation. Ah, okay. How check. Duh. Okay, let's try this one. Wait, what's this dot thing about, by the way? Ah, okay, so you put dot there so it doesn't... That, that's that's very smart, the day of redemption. That's very smart. Replace dot with dot, yeah. No, I got that. I was just wondering why you did that. And then I realized that YouTube is gonna... <laughs> it's gonna remove your comment. So thank you very much for realizing that. Uh, can I run this though, in here? So that... If I do docker exec... No. Yeah, let's try now. Let's see if we can do this. That seems to work, right? Echo. Mm, yeah, that seems to work better. So let's try this one. So docker compose down. Is there any good non-fictional books you recommend? Non-fiction books? I mean, like for programming? Dude, yeah, sure. I, I can recommend you a few. Uh, it depends what you want to do, Suzy Tags. I mean, right now I'm reading an extremely boring book on Rust, which is actually quite good though. It's by the O'Reilly people. So if you're interested in learning Rust, this is a good book. So it's called Programming Rust, Fast, Safe Systems of, uh, Development. And it just teaches you, like from the start, it teaches you all the, the quirks of, of Rust and um, like good practice and stuff. So that's for Rust. I mean, not programming, just life. <laughs> <laughs> all, all programming books are fiction, yeah, I agree, I agree. Uh, just life, dude. I only know fiction books, I mean, I one of my favorites for like giving you motivation and stuff uh, is the is the book, you know, all, all these guys' books are pretty good, by the way. So if you look into this author here, he's, he's a guy from Brazil and very, very popular. But he's got really good books, like The Pilgrimage is good, 
The Alchemist is also quite good. Uh, one of the best sellers in the world, actually. And that's, you know, probably the last fictional book that I read for, like, just life stuff, if it makes sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're looking into, if you're looking to get some motivation and, and some purpose in life, I guess this is a good book. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to suggest, dude, because I don't really read a lot of, like, life stuff, to be honest. Uh, and if I'm honest with you, I don't really read fiction at all. I kind of just read programming stuff, which is kind of sad, really sad, because I should probably start reading proper books, right? But yeah, I got a, I got this June book given to me as a Christmas present. Uh, I think it was like a year ago, last Christmas, basically. Not this one, the one before that. And it's still on my bedside table, like just sitting there. I've read maybe one chapter of it and yeah. I need to finish it. <laughs> Let's see, do a doc compose up. So creating my RioDB. Golang books. Uh, I, I've not read any of the Golang books, to be honest. I mean, I, I generally tend to use... Ooh, this worked. I generally use the, um, the go by example stuff. So, yeah, I mean, we still have that issue though. Unfortunately, we still have this, this bad issue here. So yeah, I mean, go by example tends to be how I learned, well, it not tends to be, go by example is how I learned uh, the basics of Go, and um, yeah, I've not really read any books in Go, yeah, perhaps I should pick up uh, one or two books, right. but I'm learning, you know, the most of it by just doing it, to be honest, because Go is a fairly simple language, there aren't many sort of like different topics that you have to understand compared to other languages, so... Is it worth reading programming books because they are... I can't read the... They are stuff like go by example for an example. Um, it's Yeah, it's definitely worth reading some of them. As I said, it depends on the language. Like, um, it's, it's worth reading books that have something special about them. Just not like... If you pick up a C++ book, for example, I mean, reading the entire thing in one go isn't going to make you learn it faster. Um, so it's, you know, for that, for that type of book where you're just picking up a programming language book, uh, I tend to use them as references. Like I, I need to know how a modules work in, in, in Rust. So I pick up the book and then I read like the, the entire chapter on modules, for example. I don't read like back to back if it makes sense. Uh, however, if I, I have books on machine learning as well by O'Reilly, uh, hands-on machine learning for example and this is the sort of book that you can read back to back because it has quite a few examples in it and uh, you kind of have to keep consistent with the book so because you know the chapter two really depends on things from chapter one and all the examples will just like build up from the previous ones so yeah i mean i would say just you know it depends on the language really like for something like c or rust i would recommend picking up a book for reference because they generally are much better than the documentation that you can find online. But if it's for something like this, where you just want to learn some machine learning, for example, uh, you know, pick a book like this and then just read it back to back, practicing every day. And yeah. Oh, I got the introduction to statistical machine learning. Yeah. Oh, I think I've heard of that one. That one's more theoretical, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the one I just showed you is more like, you know, kind of easy examples to prepare data and then putting you through pipelines and Python and stuff, so. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, that's the book I actually read at, at uni, Statistical Machine. Not not the entire thing, as I said, but our like coursework and exams were based on that, on the exercises from that book, so I picked it up just to be ahead of everyone else, so. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it works now, guys, but we still have the same issue. I mean, did it work? I can't tell. Please remember to set. Yeah, I mean, I'm still having the issue of like, it seems to be starting before the, um, the table was actually created. Right, let's see. Temporary service stopped. I 
we're not going to be able to finish this today. I was, I was so hoping that we can finish this in two hours. It seemed like something that's so easy. <laughs> um, oh yeah, first of all, let me, let me just check the, the stuff is working. I mean, is it actually working if I do localhost 8080? Yeah, I mean... It's gonna give me an error down here, right? Yeah, there you go. But it's, it, says, it seems to me that the ports are open anyway, so... The only thing is that we don't have the DB working, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah, I mean, you can see that Golang app actually starts up before uh, the DB has finished, like setting up the da database and stuff. I am looking for my... the message that says creating database urchin. There you go, creating database urchin is down here. So this is where it's creating my database that I'm attempting to access up here. But anyway, yeah, the MariaDB, this is the main issue. The MariaDB thing is unknown. Um, so ideally my health check would be something like making sure that um, we can kind of we can kind of see that the table is the, that the database is created, right? That's let, let's see if we can do that. So um, Maria DB health check uh, database created. You have to add command in your app to wait for a table to be available. Yeah, I can do that too. I am wondering if there's a way to do it with the health check though. This is the official documentation here. Health check SU connect and be initialized. Yeah, so. Yeah, the only problem with the suggestion canal is that I don't really have MySQL installed on the date on the Docker image. I don't want to install the you know MySQL there just so I can connect to it from a terminal. And on the app itself, I think the connection string requires the database um, name, doesn't it? Let's take a look. Database. Ooh, there go. What's the function called? Make SQL database connection. So it takes in the password address. The address is the one, two, three. This is the third one. And it takes the database name as well. Yeah. So I didn't want to have to change that. You see, just just for the health check stuff. Sounds like a longer way of doing it. Test MySQL user info execute show databases. Can we run this? Okay, maybe maybe this is gonna work, right? Do we have MySQL installed on there? Matt, how do you set up your database? Um, it's a migration files, so Goose is gonna do it for me. I just need to have a database set up, basically. It starts from ground up and it goes up. There's a video on it, by the way. It's on the description if you wanna check out how we actually do it. We've done this on stream before. But anyway, database migrations, that's that's how we're setting up now. And I, I'm trying to run the migrations, uh, but it's, it's where you know, the migrations command is the one that's failing, basically, because it doesn't have access to, to the, the MySQL, yeah. Um, you know, th the main issue is that it doesn't, 
I have a network issue here. I don't know how to, to get the MariaDB address from the other container, but we're, we're figuring out, right? So we, we're gonna figure it out. So, right. I lost my thought now. I don't know what I was doing. Oh yeah, the test, right? So let's see if we can bring up the, the MariaDB down here. So Docker compose up MariaDB. And if we do a docker exec, is that right? Is it exec? No. Oh gosh, it was docker exec minus it. And then the docker ID here, so Oh gosh. It was IT and then the command itself, I forgot what it was. I need to look up the Docker exec example. I'll check it out. How do you create the urchin database? Do you mount a SQL script to your MariaDB? Um, no, so the uh, this, uh, this Docker container creates a database automatically for you because I guess there's a command inside the Docker image. I haven't really looked at it, but the one that you get from the official uh, repository uh, takes in a variable called MariaDB database. And if it's set, it creates that database for you, you know? So that's that, that's what's going on here. That's how you can see the, you know, the log that says creating database urchin. And then the tables are gonna be set up after I run my migration. Uh, why is Docker on? There you go. My container shell. See, okay. Oh, what is going on here? Well, it's not been closed. Not a container, docker exec. So use it in my SQL doc found. Not found in minus n. Oh. Yeah, so my SQL isn't found on the on the MariaDB database. Wait, can I just log into it and see what's available in there? Escape the around the show data. Yeah, yeah, I've realized that, sorry. I've escaped it. Uh, you don't need to escape. Uh, this should work in, in Bash when you have um, nested, I guess, double quotes. So can I go into a you know, log into Docker container? I keep forgetting the commands, like I, I'm very bad at it. Okay, bash. <laughs> it's the same thing, except we just use bash. <laughs> there you go, that makes sense. Uh, so what is available to me? MySQL, nope. MySQL admin, also not available. Maria DB available? Yeah, so we do have that. So Maria DB is available. MariaDB command show databases. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to see if I can use the MariaDB command to um, kind of show me the databases and I'm going to grep for the database name that's in there. That's all. That's the plan here. Hello King Hader. How is it going dude? Welcome to the stream. Let's let's look at the man for this. So MariaDB help. Can we kind of run something? So 
Tables. Is there anything here that's going to help us with with run your command? Use same commands for my SQL. Uh, yeah, but I want to do it just in one command. So I want to do MariaDB and then obviously pass in my username here and the password or whatever. And, that as, uh, and say something like, you know, select or show tables or show databases or something. Yeah. U and P root, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I can do this, but I don't want to have to log into. I can't. I can't do this from the health check command. You can see what I mean, right? So it has to be from from here. I, I must be able to pass in as the same command as the the command line argument here. But I'm trying to figure out how how to do that. So exec exec a thing. E vertical execute name execute command and quit. Oh, there you go. That's E. No database created, right? So if I do use urchin, there you go. So that 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 works, right? So if I don't have urchin here, and if I do echo minus this, this should be a return. Oh, sorry. Uh, if I do this and then I echo the the return is one. So that that's a failure. But if it does exist then the return is zero. Right, so let's do this. this. This seems to be a better health check for us, right? I don't actually know why they don't say this on the original documentation. It's, it just seems like a better thing to do, right? To check that your database is actually connected. But anyway, so uh, this seems to work and we've done some problem solving in the stream. So MariaDB. User is root. Use urchin, right? So now let's see. <laughs> let's see what actually happens. And if you fix the same as usual, guys, you guys can drop the the heart emoji there. So Docker compose down. Docker Compose up. Oh. Let's see now. So this should only run after everything, right? So using Stopping temporary service. Right. I mean, we're still having the issue of not being able to connect to it, but that's fine. I want to see if this only run after my thing was created, my urchin table, uh, my urchin database. Hmm. I cannot see it. So if it's down here, it's already failed, unfortunately. I don't think it worked, unfortunately. There you go, creating database urchin is down here. But then, I don't understand how we were able to, to run this. How we run this before it was actually created. What have we done here? Have we saved this? We have saved this, right? That kind of sucks, guys. That kind of sucks very much.
Uh, one way is to fail your container and ask a docker to restart always. How does that work? Canal, how does how do I do this? In that case, app will retry unless success. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm down to do that, but like, how do we do this? So we basically should start. Only should start the services here. Sorry, the Golang app when this one succeeds, right? It would be so nice if you can say, you know, just wait for a particular log. So just wait for this log here. Server created on IP or whatever. You have to exit bash with error code. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah, I understand what you mean. I see what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's fine, right? So set minus EUO. That should do, right? And off it in there. Let's see now. Enough exited, right? Cool. So now we basically just look at the documentation and say to restart, right? Restart or something. Always, right? Restart always. Right. That should be a little bit better now. Do I have a retry like timer or is it just gonna try and do it all the time? Okay, yeah, see, it's just doing it over and over again now. Yeah, I mean, bottom line is we still have this, right? We still have to figure out this bit here. Actually, I'm pretty sure this one has a copyright, so I'm going to skip it. Sorry about that. So Docker compose. Someone must have like connection refused. There you go. This, this guy does, has had the same problem that, that we have before. What is this connection string? Jesus Christ, what is that? Container name, try using as a host name instead of full stack. I mean, we've got, we've got that already here, so. My database address is this. We're still getting that error. This is not not ideal. So we have MariaDB here, part three hundred six. Oh, that kind of sucks. I don't know what it is. Let's see how these guys do with Postgres, I guess. Oh no, I don't want to have to log in to read this whole thing. Come on, dude. Right, so this person has an API here, which is, I guess, the, the actual application running. Um, and Postgres down here. 
So DB uses Postgres, host is Postgres. So they're just using They have no networks and oh. and they just they, they don't have a container name either. I mean, don't want to have to read a fifty-minute video. Uh, watch a fifty-minute video to do that. Why is it so difficult? Why can't I find the the correct connection string here? Roll and gap fails to normalize my SQL. Oh gosh! So goose db. database user, version database password is root, version database go CMS, no, nope. that should have been urchin as well, but in here we have everything we need, root and root, and maybe ODB, oh. Postgres. See, the thing is, the the connection strings change between Postgres and MySQL with Goose, and it's kind of annoying to be honest. And I've seen all of these examples on that page anyway, so they have some examples um, on that page down here. You can see all the connection strings, but you know. This is kind of what I'm using, to be honest, so. All right, this is what we have. So we have goose driver MySQL here, and goose db string root at root. And MariaDB, this is, this is the issue though. MariaDB isn't correct. DB name. Uh, no more examples. Maybe we're missing the TCP, right? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. Open connection MySQL. Then you use a name and password at TCP. Ah, okay. So that's what we're. That's that's maybe what we're missing, guys. That's maybe what we're missing. If I do this, so port three o six, and the host is MariaDB. Is this gonna be better now? That's my my question. Okay, no, that, that worked. Oh my God, it worked. <laughs> We've got the app, there you go. Bottom of the story, uh, bottom of the story. Uh, the uh, bottom, bottom line here is that I basically forgot, well, I didn't realize I needed this, the TCP connection string, right? But after looking at <laughs> after looking at this answer here, it seems that we've got it working now. For the local host, yeah, so, right, that's great. That was an amazing end to the stream, because now uh, we essentially have a way to tell people how to run this. Uh, about doesn't quite work, yeah, but that's fine. 
contact does work. Hello, hello. Just gonna make sure it works. Okay, everything's still working fine, it seems. That's great, guys. That's, that's amazing. Um, so yeah, let's let's push this off, shall we? And what I wanted to do now is make sure that if I ch make any changes to the repository here, does it still show up here? Because it's a bind. Thank you, Susie Tags. Yeah, guys, if you can drop a, a like on the video for this, I would appreciate it. Uh, yeah, let's try, let's try and change one of the the source code here. I don't know what, what can we change now. So we can change... I don't actually know. So maybe if we change the views, right? That's probably the easiest way to, to change something. Index.temple. So we've got title, menu, and contact form. Let's change it to home page, right? So, yeah, this is going to rebuild. Oh, that's amazing. That's incredible. So, well, we now have home page up here. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. It's working as expected, and I'm happy. It's good to see people struggle. Uh, anyway, so if I do, if I turn it down now, let's actually push this and package it up nicely so we can tell people how to use the app, shall we? Uh, so what did we change here? So we've got the Docker file, which we're going to push on this branch here, Docker file. Adding air to docker file so we can compose our app let's push that and i think there's been some really interesting learnings today uh, we've learned that you can't really trust the original the, <laughs> the official documentation for the health check on the MariaDB because obviously we, we were able to just craft a much better command that will actually fail if the database doesn't exist, um, which is what we wanted. And with the help of Canal, we managed to restart the service every every time it fails until it succeeds, which is definitely good. Um, yeah. Let's create a new branch here. So git branch, git checkout branch, um, you know, Docker compose steps right and this is where we add everything so this is where we add the changes to air.tomo and this is where we add views index as well what else have we changed here guys so we've changed definitely the doc the compose run and we don't need the unfile uh, we do need docker compose yaml right Is there anything else I'm missing? No, I think that's it. So let's commit this. Um, oh yeah, let's let's put some some documentation on this, right? Right. So we have the README file, and can we open preview? Open preview here. That's what it looks like. Uh, where can we add it? So installations, running the app. Okay, yeah. So let's do this. Make install tools. Go build urchin. Okay, yeah, first of all, this is not quite right because we need to do a go build urchin. That's fine. So we also need to, following that, make sure you run the goose migrations for the database we recommend creating a database called urchin and running the following command right this is where I put my messed up goose command here 
so something like this. Place the database connection string with the appropriate. Depending on where your database is, right? Right. Uh, yeah, I mean we can we can definitely do that. So let's also put another example here. Example running with Docker Compose, right? To run with Docker Compose, use the following command. That is it. <laughs> as easy as, right? This will start the urchin app. You can customize for more information. Okay, that is going to go up here. And we can put a little explanation here. So this will start um, two containers. One containing the urchin app serving the core. 8080 and another one serving the MariaDB database internally. This will also run the migrations automatically to set up the database. That's amazing. I think we've got everything now. Uh, we can push this. Oh yeah, let's add a few more, a little bit more pizzazz to this, shall we? So let's look at and what a readme looks like. I mean, it looks kind of nice. Um, it'd be nice if we had an image here, a logo or something. Uh, this looks shit. I took it from, I think it was like Excalibur or something, but it, he exported the image with a white background and not a black background for some reason. I need to remove that. I've got a good joke here. So since it's a headless, um, it's a headless CMS, we can add a little meme there to make it fun. Can we just copy this? So no head. Can I download this? Oh no 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 no. I wanna download the, <laughs> the GIF. Open image in a new tab. There you go, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna shamelessly copy this and put it into a, a readme file. Yeah, there's a little bug on Windows now because, like, some if, if you go into the file savers, you can't see the WSL paths here. But if you just copy and paste it here, then you can still open it. So I don't know why they just haven't added it to, to the file explorer. There you go, Windows. If anyone's watching this from Microsoft, please, that's a feature request. So, Okay, now can we add the image here? So we have PNG. Okay, that works. <laughs> I like it. Right, let's push the shit. release I don't need that origin All right boys I think we're I think we're Gucci we're Gucci 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 All right let's merge those things real quick into urchin
Um, yeah, we've got two actually. So let's merge Docker Compose first. Oh no, 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 we merged Docker, yeah. So we want to add the uh, go app for, to the Docker container. And we needed it, needed this for the Docker Compose incoming work, right? I'm also going to create another pull request which is this one here. So adding docker compose steps and improvements to readme. It was a little difficult for people to figure out how to run the project. There you go, boys. Uh, thing is, <laughs> has this one passed the pipeline? So adding uh, to the app. Oh, I didn't realize that Git supports the the code like type on the on the headers here. That's interesting. Uh, did I show you guys the pipeline? We've got a pipeline too. I've added GoLang CI uh, linters here uh, in a composable GitHub Actions and also a build script which packages here. So yeah. I'm just waiting for the build to be done and then we can we can move on. There you go. So that worked. And that means we can just gotta make sure that everything's working fine before we, we hit the merge button, right? So we squash and merge, squash and merge. Delete the branch. And that's it, that's one done. And is this gonna work now? Okay, update branch. Maybe we can update the branch for, for the CI here. Oh, so we're gonna run everything again. So yeah, guys, that was a good stream though. Uh, we've managed to get quite a lot done actually. We've got a whole feature, I guess, um, in one stream. It did take a little bit longer than I thought it would take, to be honest, but without your help, it was still a, l a lot faster than it would have been if I was just doing this on my own, I think. Uh, or maybe not, maybe I would be able to focus more and do it even quicker, who knows. Uh, but it's been some, in it's, been, it's been good. We've found uh, very interesting stuff. We managed to create the entire uh, Docker Compose file for, for this project. We managed to also link things in the network in a DB string. And yeah, I'm very happy, very, very happy with that. Now we're just waiting for one last merge here. But I'm going to leave the stream here, guys. I mean, it's been a pleasure again. Thank you all for joining today. And if you haven't yet, drop a like. I know I appreciate that very much. And I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll be streaming tomorrow, by the way. So if you guys are free, I'll be streaming tomorrow. Because I'll be traveling for work on Tuesday uh, for three days. So I won't be able to stream then. But, you know, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, once again, thank you all for joining. And I will see you guys soon. You know, have a good evening. Have a good start of the week. A good Monday. And bye-bye. Ciao.